Next installment. This is how far I've gotten. Uh, I've uh, temporarily installed the rotor. Uh, I've only got one screw in it so I can rock it this way and that way to get it as uh, um, plumb as possible. And for the antenna, I am really, really tight in here. And I don't have a super high degree of confidence in this location because of the duct. And uh, seeing how it is so close in proximity and the fact that it's foil covered, uh, I'm kind of expecting it to interfere with the antenna's operation. And we're going to find out uh, soon if that's going to be the case. And I think relative to my limited options on where else to put this antenna, I think if it does interact badly, then I will probably cut these straps holding uh, this duct and let the duct drop a bit. Now, I know why it's done this way. I know that I'm going to give up something in the way of efficiency in terms of the airflow of this duct, which I believe it might be one of the returns. I'm not sure. But I'd rather give up a little bit of airflow efficiency in terms of the curvature, the gentle curve of the duct. Um, then uh, if the antenna interferes, because the only other place that I can really put it is right here, which is still in front of duct work that absolutely I can't move. And then there's the air handler itself. Uh, so avoiding all of this stuff is uh, damn near impossible. So I'm going to stick with this for now. I am going to uh, uh, secure the um, rotor so it can't move because I want to see and make sure that I've got um, uh, 360 degree clearance because that's awful close but even if I'm uh, missing it by a sixteenth of an inch then that's good and the lower part of the can you see that the lower part of the antenna will clear that lower board um, so that otherwise it looks like it's in a good position except for the fact that this foil lined duct is is right there in the way now I might also try moving this duct back um, a bit but I don't know if that's gonna really do anything for me <clears throat> and ironically of course of course you know that this is gonna happen that this back wall or that's back uh, the rear of the roof is pointing roughly south southeast uh, direction which is where most of the repeaters are um, you know it's it would be nice if uh, if the repeaters were on the uh, other side so that the back end of the beam was uh, up against this uh, foil but of course that is uh, not to be. So when they installed this ducting, they did not consider that a ham was going to be buying the house. Uh, so, so that's basically where we are. And I keep looking back here. There is this gap, but because this duct, which is, you know, the main trunk uh, of the attic, um, I don't think the antenna will will fit. I think that the the antenna will bump into the roof over here um, because the duct is right in the way of where the antenna would need to be. So I don't think that's a viable option. Uh, really, I think that the only other option would be in this area. Um, but I'm not going to get away from uh, all of this foil line ducting in the uh steel air handler so we're going to take our chances and see what happens and hope that if the antenna does interact if i just <coughs> excuse me if i just drop that duct and kind of let it sag so that the antenna is not directly facing it and that it if i could get it down so it's below the level of the antenna that i might just get away with it now i will point out that in my other house 
I had a larger beam, but it was also, the attic was also full of uh, foil lined um, insulation and there was a large um, air handler, uh, larger than this one actually. And that antenna did not interfere or did not interact. The SWR was good. Um, so maybe, maybe I'll get lucky here. We're, we're about to find out, but as I said, next step here right now is to make sure that the uh, rotor is level, not level, uh, plumb, straight up and down. Um, and uh, then I've got the, the cable and I've got the, uh, the control box. I'm going to test the rotor, which I will film. And then if that works, uh, I will connect a short run of coax and I'll test the SWR using a, uh, a Kenwood handheld and a short run of coax and see where that gets me. Um, the, co the Kenwood handheld is 5 watts. My base station Yesu radio is 10 watts. I can always add an amplifier if I really had to. I don't want to. Um, but if I needed to, and, and the higher power though may then trigger interaction issues with um, all of this wonderful foil, so it could be it, it it could be more of a curse than a blessing. We'll see. So on with the next steps, and I will uh, join you when I am ready to rotate the antenna. Bye for now. Okay, we're back. <clears throat> I have uh, hooked up the controller for the rotor and we're going to turn this thing. Here's the controller and let's start the show. Let's go from north to south. Well, that's interesting. Uh, I don't know if you saw that or not, but it did come in contact. The antenna uh, did come in contact uh, momentarily with the um, with the ducting, and so let's go back north. There it is again, just brushing up against it. Oop, I missed it. Oh, it was too high on the camera. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's go the other direction. Oh, I can't. I gotta go full 360 then. And there's the back end of the antenna swinging around. It's going to brush up against the ducting. Keep going. Okay, so, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see that up there, but, let me check. The back of the antenna is just a hair under that uh, beam, so, okay. 
you miss by I don't know 64th of an inch well might get might rub but again that's you know that's the nature of the beast here so the next step is to hook up some coax test for antenna interaction see if I get a good SWR a wacko SWR and then we'll go from there so one more interruption I'll be back shortly okay we're back so um, I've got an SWR bridge here I got uh, Kenwood uh, dual band handheld and I've got everything hooked up to the antenna and back so let's see uh, what we can see here let's turn the light on you see that? That's one of the local repeaters. Okay, the moment of truth. Full scale. Let's see. Well, it's not two to one. Less than 1.2 to one. Let's try another repeater. Turn the light on. we can hit any 440 machines I'm not checking right now I don't not sure where these 440 repeaters are located So it looks like the I get a good shot of that. Well, sorry, I, I um, accidentally turned the. Uh, The recorder off um or the uh the video recorder off okay so I, I think we've got success here uh we've got a reasonable swr we were able to hit a repeater full scale i'll do audio tests uh, um uh when i get a chance there are a couple things i still have to do the antenna is not actually pointed north but the rotor is oriented north so i have to get a count a compass and set the antenna so that uh, it agrees with the compass direction on the controller and uh, then the next step would be to route the cables uh, into my shack which is going to be a pretty big cha challenge um, as I've noted in uh, earlier in this video the uh, The coax is going somewhere over there, not sure where, and I think it's going to be a bitch uh, to uh, to wire. Um, so uh, I may try to tackle that on another day. Uh, but um, we've made good progress. The antenna is mounted; it clears uh, the area um, where it's mounted just barely, uh, but it does clear, and so that's the most important thing. Um, and so we will uh, we'll go from there. Another thing that um, I want to do for where's my lamp uh, for the coax. According to the instructions, they want the coax to extend um, 
um, off the antenna, uh, fairly straight off the antenna. And as you can see, that coax is drooping. I may try to rig up something with a wood dowel or something uh, to uh, support the coax so it's going straight out just to uh, um, uh, maximize the performance of the antenna. Um, but at least right now, we've got some good preliminary test results that I'm happy with and uh, we'll proceed with the final install and getting the coax and the uh, antenna controller uh, routed um, to uh, into the shack. So I'll show you that all in good time and uh, until then. Uh, thanks a lot. See you later. Okay, I thought I would just show you what I'm up against here in the front room. Here's my shack, <clears throat> and I'm not going to be able to get into that corner, I don't think. Uh, there doesn't seem to be access. There's a hole up in the attic um, which partition, which is, seems to be just large enough to accommodate ducting for that uh, AC duct. Um, there doesn't seem to be any other room up there, so I think I'm going to probably have to bring the cable down uh, through the ceiling here. It's going to be awkward, but it'll probably have to come down either in the right-hand corner or the left-hand corner of the ceiling, and then come down here and then down the wall to the floor. Uh, I don't see any other way. So, um... Like I said, it's going to look a little awkward, but I think... All right, a uh, quick note here. We're about to adjourn to go up into the attic to try and locate where that fish tape is. <clears throat> uh, in terms of determining where to run this coax, originally I was thinking that it would have to come down over the door here. And I was really unhappy about that because obviously with the angle of this roof, there's no good way to run the cable to the floor. And then it just dawned on me that, hey, I've got this closet right next door. I can run the cable down to the floor, run it over the rug. Of course, I will feel the coax when you step on the rug in the right place, but it's a lot neater if it works. So I drilled a one inch hole. Uh, I'm not going to mess around and try and make it too tight because I'm going to be pulling cable that has a PL259 attached to it. And of course my first attempt was a failure because I forgot to use my stud finder and uh, wound up drilling into a stud. Uh, so then I used the stud finder, uh, which I guess was uh, uh, not the smartest thing in the world to forget to do that and just plunge in, but that's, you know, it, this is uh, unvarnished YouTubism. Uh, or YouTubery, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, but uh, I drilled the second hole and uh, hit insulation rather than a, uh, um, wood. So, I ran the uh, fish up there and I didn't feel any, uh, a heck of a lot of resistance. And I pointed it towards the back of the house. Uh, where um, uh, I should be able to access the fish and then connect coax and the rotor controller to it. And um, so that's what we're going to do next. We're going to adjourn to the attic and see if we can see where this fish is. And I may have to play more out. I may have to do some up and down and up and down stuff to get it uh, uh, into a good spot. But uh, so far, so good. So let's go in the attic and see where this fish landed. See you then. Okay. I got uh, uh, kind of absorbed in this. Uh, you zoom out here. I didn't, sorry, I didn't record it, but I've run the coax. To the antenna. And it's sticking straight out like that because the instructions call for it. Then down the mast, then 
nice and loose around the rotator so the rotator can rotate and the rotor cable is also routed as well as the coax you can see the two lines I believe around that duct into that corner Let's see. sorry I turned the video camera off No more zoom, I guess. Uh, Samsung camcorder. As I have said in other videos. There we go. It sucks. So the coax runs there. And then... Uh, right past the rafters it goes down into the closet so that's how I routed the coax in the attic <clears throat> so I am now let's zoom out again I'm now done where was I? I am now done with the install of the antenna in the attic I am going to drop this duck in a minute, ducked in a minute, just to give a little bit more clearance and hopefully not have that foil reflect too much uh, signal back into the antenna, uh, just for just for yucks. But other than that, I'm done up here. The rest of it's going to be downstairs, uh, running the cable to the to the radio uh, because the cable is currently in the closet. So I've got a few more feet of uh, sweat and toil to go before I'm finished. Uh, so I will see you back at the ranch. See ya. Okay, I decided before I route the cabling out of the closet over here to the shack, I would do a quick SWR test. Uh, I've already done it because I was dying of curiosity and uh, it looks good, but now I'll demonstrate it for you. So we're on the uh, uh, 440 simplex channel. Yes, I have already identified myself. So please keep the radio police comments to yourself. Will you focus, please? And so we're on almost full power. And there you have it. On 440. we have negligible SWR. So, let's go to, where are we here? Uh, yeah, 146.58. And it should be set up correctly. So, One point two to one is what I see, or a little bit less than that. So mission accomplished. I would say that is a success. This is, by the way, a Yesu FT three seventy. <coughs> Excuse me. Some bits of fiberglass stuck in my throat. This is an FT336R, which I've had for quite a few years. I bought it used, it wasn't working right, sent it off, had it repaired. Uh, the repair has held since, so uh, I think I've owned this radio for about eight, it's somewhere between eight and ten years. And it has served me well as a VHF UHF base station. And uh, so um, now it's a question of uh, relearning how to program the memory channels on this radio since I have not had to program the memory channels for uh, many years uh, that's going to take uh, some consultation with the manual uh, because I do remember that it was a, a fairly annoying process to get the memory channels programmed so um, over here is where you do all that fun stuff and 
um, I will uh, set that up so that I can see if I can hit the local repeaters, which I should be able to at this point. And so that's uh, kind of it for uh, the beam. I haven't uh, plugged the rotor in yet, uh, so that'll be another uh, exercise. But now I need to sort all this cable out, uh, the rotor cable and the coax. And I'm going to move it from the closet under the rug over to the wall and then ultimately to this radio and we will we huh, I will cut the coax uh, so that it's the shortest run possible but I don't think I'm going to cut the uh, rotor cable I think I'm just going to coil that up and uh, um, park it with tie wraps behind the desk um, but uh, anyway so we've still got a little bit more work to do and I'll take a, cute, a few more uh, snippet videos of that work um, got to run a snake underneath the carpet. I've done that several times already running computer cables from my home office which is on the other side of that closet over to my router uh, because Wi-Fi is a little bit sketchy. Um, one of these days I'll uh, upgrade to Wi-Fi 6 maybe that'll help um, but right now we'll it is what it is. So um, like I said, as I progress and get the uh, spaghetti plate uh, straightened out, I will uh, uh, take a few more video snippets of that as it progresses until we have everything uh, set up. Um, and uh, we will go from there. So, uh, for me, God knows how long it will be. I'm not sure if I'm going to do this tonight or save it for another night, but... Uh, be that as it may, you'll see the, the progress as it happens, then I'll wrap up this video and post it to YouTube. Okay, so that's it for now. We'll see you, I guess for you it'll be a second, for me it'll be God knows, who knows how long. See ya, bye. Back once more. Okay, so I'm wiring up the uh, controller for the rotor, and I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but this is silver, this is brass, this is brass colored. So silver goes to one and then the other two in order in terms of middle versus end. Um, so that's how we're going to terminate these. Um, I don't have my stand up here and I'm impatient to get this done. So I'm assuming you guys aren't going to be heartbroken if you don't see me actually terminate. Um, but that's what uh, the plan is to terminate this. And um, I have run the rotor cable and I have run the coax. I had to cut the PL259 off uh, which was expected in order to be able to uh, snake it under as I mentioned before. I want to uh, make that run as short as possible. I probably have two extra feet or so. I don't think that'll kill anything so I'll leave it. But I still have to terminate that end and um, then I have to program the radio. So. Uh, we're getting there as far as the um, uh, the cabling uh, came down in the closet as you saw before I've neatened up the wires to come along the wall I'll put some tie wraps to neaten up a little bit further uh, it is a closet so it doesn't have to be perfect and there it goes under the rug and I run it along the channel um, along the, the tack line or whatever they call that uh, tack strip uh, to keep the uh, rug in place. Ran it around the corner of the door here and then it is snaked across the carpet, underneath the carpet, um, right there. Uh, and then it comes to this wall. Then I lifted the carpet up and I ran it underneath the carpet along here until it comes out of the carpet somewhere over there. Um, there is where it comes out. So uh, on to the uh, next step which is to terminate the rotor, uh, terminate the coax, and then uh, button this all up and uh, get on the air. Okay, I will 
revisit this when I'm done uh, with these uh, cables. All right, see you in a minute. Okay, I just wired up the rotor and let's see if it works. I just plugged in the rotor controller and let's point this sucker south. Now if you can see, the position indicator is moving, which is an indication that I've got the rotor wired correctly. South is where most of the repeaters are, so Okay, so I'm positioned to play with the repeaters once I get the radio recorded. All right, progress is progress. Uh, I'll give you another quickie update when I get the coax terminated. Bye. Okay, here's the epilogue of the adventure of installing a uh, dual band beam in an attic. Um, we've gotten to the point where we've successfully hooked everything up. And um, as you can see, I'm able to hit the repeater. I've been talking on the repeater, been getting good signal reports um, on the repeater. So uh, my concerns about um, having the uh, uh, metallic coated ducting up uh, in the attic interfere with the antenna was uh, happily unfounded. And so um, we have mission accomplished here. Uh, so, uh, apologies for the, uh, um, crappy nature of the video that I took in the, in the attic. Uh, I was obviously standing, well, maybe not obviously, I was standing in a confined space trying to hold this, uh, VCR with one hand and tools in the other hand, trying to steady myself, whatnot, and, uh, kept, uh, accidentally turning the, um, camera off or bumping the zoom, uh, uh, button, what have you. Uh, so I do apologize for the uh, crappy quality of the video up in the attic, but I think that you get the general idea in terms of um, going through the steps of uh, going up into the attic, evaluating where an antenna might work, uh, figuring out where to install the rotor and uh, how to run the cabling, um, and uh, then, you know, assembling the antenna and the rotor, mounting everything, and running the cable back into the shack. Um, so the, the object here was uh, uh, pretty much for the uninitiated to at least give you an idea of what it takes um, to uh, do an attic install, uh, give you a rough idea of some of the steps involved in terms of uh, getting all the equipment ready and, and going through those steps of getting the equipment installed and getting the cabling run to wherever your radio is and all of that fun stuff and uh, in that respect I hope there was at least something useful here if not I'm sorry that uh, it didn't help you and uh, um, I also have to say that uh, you know a, a, this video is for demonstration purposes I am absolutely not the world's most foremost expert on installing antenna beams in the attic, um, I just, uh, uh, you know, um, I've been a ham for a long time and have learned through trial and error, and I've also learned from others. Um, fortunately, we all now have YouTube to watch videos from. Uh, that's a relatively recent thing. Before then, it was just uh, knowing hams in the area who've had experience doing these things and getting them to help you. But uh, whichever... Um, this uh, uh, video is for demonstration purposes. I am not responsible if you choose to take on an attic install for anything that might go wrong. There are inherent hazards of working in attics. You could come in contact with exposed electrical wires, the hazards of exposed fiberglass. You could take a wrong step and fall through the ceiling. Or if your attic is like mine and you have to use a ladder to gain access to it, you could uh, take a misstep and fall through the hole and wind up in a world of hurt. As I said, there are all kinds of hazards and uh, you have to take uh, the appropriate caution when you're doing this kind of work. And as I said, I, I'm not responsible, can't be responsible for, for anything that goes wrong if you choose to attempt to install 
a uh, similar antenna um, in your attic. All I can say is good luck and be careful uh, and uh, hope everything works out for you. So uh, that's it for this uh, video series. I wanted to get this wrapped up. You may notice from uh, uh, an earlier shot of the shack, the shack has changed a little bit. I built a shelf. I haven't finished it yet. I want to make sure that everything fit well. I, I may not finish it. I actually kind of like the way it looks. But I built a shelf for my shack for that, to make room for an Elecraft K3 line, which includes the K3 transceiver, the external speaker, pan adapter, and the 500 watt amplifier and uh, automatic antenna tuner. Um, this equipment actually is not mine. It belongs to the local radio club, and this equipment was donated to the radio club by a very generous ham who could have sold it and pocketed the money. Um, but uh, for whatever reason, he was, uh, um, I think he was getting out of the hobby. I'm not sure about that. Um, but um, uh, whatever his motivations were, uh, an incredibly generous donation to the club. And the uh, radio club asked me to put this station together, put it through its paces, figure out how everything worked um, while uh, the club leadership figures out uh, what they are exactly going to do. There are plans. Uh, whether those plans come to fruition or not, I don't know. Um, but in the meantime, I'm having an awful lot of fun learning about this um, station and uh, um, also very impressed. Uh, this is good equipment. Um, and every bit is good as uh, my Yesu 5000. Um, few critiques on, on the Elecraft, but uh, nothing of uh, terrible consequence. Uh, it's it's a, just a solid performer as far as I'm concerned. And uh, um, but that's uh, I guess for another video. Um, I uh, you'll also to explain that gap in the shack. Uh, I uh, am getting ready to work on the uh, drag transmitter, and uh, that's why I'm doing this uh, epilogue, if you will, um, to uh, get the video out of this camera and get it processed and make room for. Uh, um, videoing my efforts to get the Drake uh, T4XC back on the air, uh, which hopefully will be successful, but uh, is by no means assured because of my lack of test equipment uh, and general lack of experience in working with two radios. So I'm not sure how far I'm going to go with it uh, before I back off and maybe box it up and ship it out to somebody who knows more than I do. But I'm going to give it a, a shot and see what happens. So I'm going to record that. And um, I've already recorded rebuilding the AC4 power supply. I'm also going to get that video out uh, before I start videoing and attempting the repair on the transmitter. So that'll be next. And uh, then uh, after that uh, will be the transmitter. So uh, wish me luck. And uh, on that note, uh, 73, thanks for watching. And... Uh, we will uh, see each other soon. Thanks. Bye.